boom, they called my name, told me to pack up. And I knew what it was about. And I'm I'm salty, right? And I'm walking around, and I'm mad. Mm -hmm. One of my stick mans, who's been around me the whole time, never said anything about anything about his charges, about his release date. And he seen me all fired up that I was getting ready to go home, right? He slid his paper over to me, and he said, what's that say? And I'm looking at it, and I don't even know what it is. And he's like, "That that's that's my release date right there. What does it say? And I just froze up and I looked up at him and it said deceased. He was never going home. He right. wasn't going home. And there you are bitching about. There I am home. bitching about getting sent back to the step closer to going home. I got goosebumps right now, bro. Yeah. That's sick. That dude right there hit you in the head, though, didn't oh, he? I mean, he, he like, woke you the oh, up in yeah. that moment. Yeah. Facts. Yep. Yeah. If I go out here and I use. I know two places for sure I'm going to end up, and that is either 141 Fort Collier Road or Mount Hebron Cemetery. Either one. What's up, Stan? What's going on? Glad you came in, bro. You're an early riser like me, man. 7.30 in the morning. This is... This yeah. is what's up. This is when I would prefer to do them all because I'm a wide awake and ready to rock and roll right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you catch me at five o'clock. I'm like, Ugh. yeah, yeah, exactly. Man, I'm, That's I'm how good. I am in the evenings. I'm done, bro. I'm done. It's over. So, uh, how long you been clean to this point? Uh, since 2017 was the last little run that I had. Uh, it was a very short run. Uh, yeah, I mean they course i was on probation like a dumbass right yeah because i remember and, you uh, went in and out on violations for a while right a lot right like that was my thing like i would get out and uh i'd be like well you know i could do just one i can go hang out with a certain crowd and boom next thing you know i'm what's probation you right. know what i mean right. and, and they're they're chasing me i'm on my face is on Facebook and well back then have you seen this guy he's been using drugs yeah. and I already knew somebody was telling on me right Dude, I mean how does that always end up happening I have had so many people over the years turn me in for shit to my probation officer like that is definitely a thing isn't it yeah I mean, when them when they picked me up the last time they said man you should, we got like 10 calls on you because I was like how'd y'all find me they're like <laughs> do you know anybody that called in no, they won't tell you. Right. I mean, well, I, I would I, think it's probably, you know, it's either two type of people. It's the people that's looking for the money, they need the money. Okay. Or it's the folks that really care about me. Right. And they knew that I was getting ready to die. I was hoping they, you was going to put that in there. Yeah, that they, that you know, they uh, wanted me safe. I had a chick on the other day that said her mom did the same thing, turned her in, had her set up and everything. And uh, she actually could convert. Con you know, forgive her mom. Like you saved my life, type shit, man. Yeah, that's big. Yeah, my mom used to tell me when I was locked up, she'd be like, "This is the best night's sleep I've had in a long time." Big step, isn't it? Yeah, that so. makes you feel good, though, doesn't it? Absolutely. Man, I got a couple of buddies that are still in the ring, bro. They're still in there fighting. <laughs> me too. And I try to tell them, bro. I'm like, yo, just man, it feels so good to get here, man. It's just like when you get to this point, you feel good with yourself, and you don't need all that other shit. Yeah. And you I, root for them, don't you? You just want absolutely. them to get there so bad. And, and the thing is, is I tell them, like, look, I have always been a follower my whole life. I said, for once in my life, let me be the leader of this thing and follow me. Right. Because things are working in the right direction. You know right. what I mean? Like, things is happening. Listen to what I'm saying now instead of things what are I happening. used to say. So what was your drug of choice? Like, what did you like to use? I like, I'm an uptown boy. Okay. You know, I like to go up top. I wasn't really a meth guy because I didn't understand the whole concept of everything they mixed. Okay. But the cocaine, uh, you know, anything that would get me up, Adderall. Okay. Now, I like the Adderall, but because it was a, to me, it was a prescribed thing, but. It gives you an excuse, doesn't it? Yep, absolutely. It did to me for years. Absolutely. For years, it gave me an excuse. Oh, the doctor's giving it to me. Doctor's giving it yeah. to me. Yeah, he didn't tell you to take seven. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. He didn't tell me to run out a week yeah. into my month prescription. Yeah, he didn't tell you you could snort them. Yeah, or, or like, shoot them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true that, man. But So so how was you doing? Like, do you like to snort? you like to smoke? you like to shoot anyway or what? Uh, I'd either snort or smoke. Okay. Um, of course, snorting's my way to do it because to me, I felt like, and, and this is the sick part of the disease, I thought that if I snorted, I could go out and do things and people wouldn't know what I was doing. And you wasn't a crackhead. Yeah. Because that's such a horrible label, isn't it? 
Yeah. It's a horrible label. You don't want to be called a crackhead. You don't yeah. want to be called dope And the fiend. funny part about it is, through my time, I ran across crackheads that made 200000 a year. They were doing way better than we were. Yeah. Uh, Who trying lived to avoid in big, being... old, big old houses and had their kids. Like, don't get it twisted. Not every crackhead's a crackhead. Right. Just like every bum on the corner is not broke. Absolutely. Yeah, man. There's a lot of crazy people in this world. A lot of crazy shit going on you don't really know about. Yeah. So pills was never your thing, huh? A little bit. A little bit here and there. Um. I had a small run with the pills, and then um, the guy that I was kind of dealing with became a really good friend of mine, and uh, I was more pushing them than than doing okay. them. Um, I would do them here and there, but I was pushing them all for for my friend, and of course, he dies, you know, ODs and dies on me, okay. and uh, I got stuck with like 300 pills, and mm-hmm. I'm like, oh man, what am so then I just went off the haywire with them. Right. It's all free money. Free all money, free, free money. pills, whatever. Yeah. So like selling milk. them, getting coke, huh? Yep. Right. Going up. Tell me what you think about this idea. I was thinking about taking the backside of this camper and turning it into a fentanyl or overdose memorial. That'd be tight. Right on the back I'll of the trailer. What, I, I you mean, know, you'd fill fentanyl, it up quick. And then anybody else, you know, don't come in and write a big ass no, thing, just, but come in and write your people's name down, man. Like... And the sad part about it, Jamie, is that that'd be filled up in about a day or two. Yeah, man. That is what's sad about it, though, isn't it? So I will turn this whole fucking trailer into a memorial. Yeah, just be The like, whole outside of yeah. it, bro. Yeah, I'd do it. Drive Heck it yeah. all around the fucking country so that people could see it. You know what I'm I saying? Because I could, I could write at least 20 myself. I know, dude. I thought about it, too, and I was like, damn, I could sit down and come five off the top of my head. Like, I got two or three in the last year. Yeah. It's getting bad, bro. Yeah. I'm glad I got out of it. Before the fentanyl thing becomes right, like I remember fentanyl older. back in the day, but it was it was a patch. You know what I mean? I got it in a patch mm-hmm. form, and it mm-hmm. was came from, you know, a pharmacy type yes. of thing, not not this stuff that's killing people. No. So so back to, like let's talk about like growing up. How was growing up? Did did anybody in your family use? Was there influences around that area? Man, man to be honest with you, I come from a a really good background. Like my family was really family oriented. Uh, I had an uncle that was kind of, he was off the chain uh, my whole life. But other than him, no. <laughs> right. So it, what you were seeing in the household wasn't alcoholism or drug use? Nope. So when were you introduced? Just when I got out on my own. And I think the problem was is that I got out too early in my life. Like When did you move out? I mean, I moved out when I was 18. Okay. But. I left at 15, so I get it. It's, sometimes it's too early. You're not ready. Yeah, I wasn't ready. Like, I, I didn't know what I was going to do yet. I still hadn't had that seed planted to exactly what I was supposed to be out here. Yeah, right? We couldn't even feed ourselves when no. we thought we was going to have a house. No, Crazy. exactly. We didn't even have a job. Yeah. I had everything. In, I, yeah, in my mind, I owned everything, but didn't have a pot to piss in. So I just ended up s- surrounding myself with folks that, we're on the other side of the street. Right. Like, i always been that guy. Like, I always felt like I'd take certain people and take them under my wing. You know what I mean? I feel that. Like, ever since I was in school, like, you know how many times I was suspended for taking up for somebody who didn't have? Right. And. So you don't like bullies? Not at all. Yeah, man. I hate bullies. I hate not, that. Not at all. And that goes for online bullies. These motherfuckers come in the comments with some crazy old shit on stuff. Bunch of tough guys behind the keyboard. I dude, love it. Dude, I put one up the other day and he was like, oh, great. A fentanyl dealer's got a podcast. I'm like, what in the are you even talking about, bro? Like, who? What? And then when I say something, you don't even have a, you don't even want to come back and say anything. Like, you're just dropping shit. That's the world we live in, though, now, isn't it? It wasn't yeah. like that when we were growing up. No. You had You had consequences for doing shit like that. Absolutely. It was in your face. Yeah. We found you. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, and it, whatever. If that if that truly makes some people feel better on the other side of the keyboard, good for you. Yeah, right. Good for right. You. No shit. Right. You have your fun. Say something stupid. Yeah. So, yeah, man, taking over people in school and then like you move out on your own. And like, when are you introduced to what? Like, is shit, it weed I didn't mean, first? I, oh, yeah. I was smoking. You know, I was smoking weed. I started about 15. Right. You know what I mean? Dipping and dabbing. But I played sports. So I was always active. And then. But I still hung out with, you know, certain people. I'd go there, you know, and get high with them and shit, their moms. And, you know, 
thought that was cool. Right. And of course, you know, as soon as I got in my parents' car, I had to be zip mouth, you know what I mean? Because they wasn't down with that. So I just kept it quiet. And, uh, you know, of course, they found out and they tried to put me in, what was that, Shalomi Benedictine? Remember that drug rehab okay. they had I years ago? Shalom. But I talked my way out of it. How old was you there? 15. Okay. Yeah, it was right so when right, I... They're just finding out just about finding weed. Out, Nothing yeah. else is a big deal. And yeah. they're like, holy shit, he's smoking weed. Let's yeah. put him in a home. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Lock him away. <laughs> right. He's it's a over bad with. guy. Yeah. But... <laughs> but that says a lot about you growing up because one of the biggest things I'm seeing about doing these is that everyone's childhood is different and you don't have anything to compare your childhood against until you grow up. Yeah. So some people are living in a cardboard box and that's their childhood. They don't know there's other childhoods. Exactly. You know, some of us don't uh, see the homelessness or whatever, but we see addiction. Some of us don't see the addiction growing up. So it's that's I think that's where all this crosses is. It's kind of like someone said that trauma or, or that trauma is the gateway. Mm -hmm. Right. So I feel like there's not a lot of trauma going on with you at this point. You're just having fun. Just, just living my life. Just thinking, you know, sooner or later, I'd figure it out. And then that, that it, it didn't come. You know what I mean? And then I woke up in prison. And was like, damn. What year was this? How old were you when you went to prison? First time I went to prison was 2006 to 2008. Okay, so jail time before that? In and out of jail? Just or? small stints, man. They just kept giving me the... For what? Just uh, stealing stuff. Like, okay. you know, that was the way that I provided for myself. Me too. You know, I me took too. shit. Bro, I was a fucking monster thief. Yeah, I got ten felonies, and they're probably all thefts because. Then, and then, and then, some guy introduced me to the check game like that was going to work. Mm. Like I'm going into a, a bank with my face, mm -hmm. thinking to myself, I'm about to get thousand dollars and get away with it. Mm -hmm. Just, no, to, just to use what? Just to go get some coke? Just to get coke? Just everything? Right, I mean, whatever. Alcohol. Anything I get my hands Money on. Money runs the world. You had to eat. Yeah. You had to pay for gas. I get Whatever it. was in the way from that place to my house that I knew of, I was getting. Like, whoop, whoop, whoop. Right. Looked like, looked like I was jumping in Mario. Just whoop, whoop, whoop. One thing to the next, whatever you wanted. Yeah. So we did stores a lot. I never liked the going, I never liked stealing from people. Yeah. Like a couple of times we went and stole generators and shit, and I'd be like, these are the type of people I've been working with my whole life, and now you're taking their shit. I never liked doing that. Yeah. Walmart. Oh, don't get it wrong. I was a I was a cold hard piece of shit. Yeah, and I was too, bro. I'm not saying I wasn't, but I, there there was still a little bit of me in there that didn't want me stealing from people that were working hard. I yeah. thought that I was stealing from Walmart or Lowe's that wouldn't hurt nobody. Again, exactly. the excuses we make in order to yeah. keep doing what we're doing. Yeah. So, and so I remember being in Coffeewood, and back then they had the reentry program here at the Winchester Jail. You remember that, like when they had it. Uh, okay, so I, I ran. I, I think I remember running you in there because you, you just did. got back from the feds. Probably did because they had a halfway house. That was, yeah, because the feds was actually in our jail then. Yes, um, and they did our halfway house. They're not yeah. there anymore. Right, so they had the reentry program for state too. Okay, in the same building, DOC, DOC, and when I was down at Coffeewood. the first time that Coffeewood State Prison, that was a receiving and everything, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, it was a lot different than it is these next latter years but you know i was down in coffee wood and i knew the time was getting close to where if they were going to send me back to the jail they were they were going to mm -hmm. and i was living you know you, you you i've done got into the groove of things yeah. you get that habit going got my got my people's got my you know my certain routines and boom they called my name told me to pack up and i knew what it was about and i'm i'm salty right and i'm walking around the and I'm mad. Mm -hmm. One of my stick mans who's been around me the whole time never said anything about anything about his charges, about where he was with his release date. And he seen me all fired up that I was getting ready to go home, right? He sat me down and he, he slid his paper over to me and he said, What's that say? And I'm looking at it, and I don't even know what it is. And he's like, "That that's that's my release date right there. What does it say? And I just froze up, and I looked up at him, and it said deceased. He was never going home. He right. wasn't going home. Like, And there you are bitching about There I am home. bitching about getting sent back to the step closer to going home. I got goosebumps right now, bro. 
Yeah. That's sick. That dude right there hit you in the head, though, didn't oh, he? I mean, he, he like, woke you the fuck up oh, in yeah. that moment. Yeah. Facts. Yep. Yeah. And uh, matter of fact, I came back to the uh, jail, and about two weeks before I was getting home, the counselor from Coffeewood calls me because he knew, that, like, you know, they each counselor works a building. You get close with them counselors. They help you with every single thing in your life. Calls me and lets me know that, you know, old Boyd passed away in his sleep. He had, like, some chronic liver disease and just no, no one knew nothing. Like, this dude was the most sound, upbeat, just chill dude you'd ever meet, man. And never was going home. Found his release date. Yeah, he got it. Went home, finally got freed, man. And uh, It's crazy how things like that is something that will stick in your head to the day you die. Yeah. Right? Like, you'll never forget that, bro. You'll never forget that. Mm-mm. That's important shit. And and being able to take somebody to that spot right now, I think it's important. You yep. know what I'm saying? Yep. I tell you, because you, you just never, you, you never know who's the guy next to you. You just never know. And, uh, you know, God rest his, his soul, you know what I mean? He's in a better place. I believe it, you know what I mean? And, uh, but, so I came back. Did didn't do well, you know. Got out, and did you have it in your head to do well? Like, oh, absolutely. It, so you're you're but, setting. So I'm doing right. I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do right. that, and you know, and the whole time people's telling me, man, go out, cut hair. Like that's what you do. Like go out and cut hair, and I'm like, yeah, right. Like what cutting hair? What'd you want to do? To sell drugs. That's the only way you could get money. The only That's way you all I'm used to. Get real money. At this point in time in my life, this is all I know. Like, right. I didn't know nothing else. Cutting hair just, it was like someone uh-huh. who sat down and draw a picture. Okay. You know, I just learned how to do it and just did it. So, came home and just started running with the same exact crowd that I left. That I yeah. was with, and thinking that I was going to get a different result. Well, worst, worst because I was the guy that would tell you when you I was sitting in the NAAA meetings in jail. The only time I ever went to NA and AA meetings was when I was locked up. Um, would be like the people, places, and things, and I'd be like, "No, that's right. not it. Yeah. That's not right." No, they're right. Yeah, they're right. Because you know, fast forward it. You know, I. Um, then I met my wife, you know, throughout some of the worst times, you know, in my life, like we'd meet up, we'd see each other, we'd hang out and then we go our separate ways. And then finally I was like, look, why don't we, why don't we try this thing, man? Like we're playing, we're, we're, we're dipping and dabbing. Why not? Like, right. like, I like you, you know what I mean? Like, I really like you and I, and I can't say I've done that for a lot of people. You know what I mean? Like. So, yeah, I met my wife, man, and we, uh, <laughs> here we are. Okay, so you met how long have I been married? Uh, 14 years. Okay, and through that process, too, though, you've been in and out of jail, you've yeah, relapsed. Yeah. She uses One, or she doesn't use? No. Okay, so she so doesn't So there was use. a small, small period in time in her life. She figured that if she couldn't beat me, then join me. Right. And she realized what it was, what it was, and... You know, they, they almost took my kids. You know what I'm saying? Like, they were like, yeah, y'all. Y'all got to tighten up. Y'all got to tighten up. And I got locked up, you know, and I knew right from then I was I was done for a while. You know what I mean? Like, so my family swooped in and took the kids and uh, because they were going to send them to a foster home if I didn't, you know. And I do right then. It was, this was over for me, man. Like I, if there's, I might not show it every day, but there's one thing that means everything in this world to me. It's my seeds. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, uh, so yeah, I, I decided to. So that was a straw that broke the camel's back. That was it. That was it, man. Having to, you know, call home and listen to my kids cry and, you know, have to do Christmas over a telephone. (laughs) Like, come on, bro. Like that's madness it's not fun yeah you know 
live in prison and and have, feel like I'm living good because my old lady puts money on my books. My old lady's taking from my kids to put money on my books, Facts. dude. Facts, bro. Stupid. You know what yeah, I mean? Man. Like the life that we live. And while you're sitting in there, though, man, you make these excuses and you tell yourself these things and you don't really realize what you're even fucking doing, do you? No. But the last bit, the, the last one, I didn't do all that. Mm -hmm. I stayed away from the little young dummies. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, I, I just, I felt like for, for the first time in my life in jail, I felt like I was backed into a corner, dude. And I was just, it was. I was a mess in So there, every time was, before this, she was what? Playing cards, chilling. playing oh, poker. Tattooing. Just, okay. Just, just, just living it up. Whatever. Doing that jail Vacation. thing. Vacation. Yeah. And yeah. You know what I mean? I, as, because in my sick mind, I thought life stopped out here. You know what I mean? Right. I didn't notice the grays coming in. You know what I mean? That mm -hmm. that means time's passing. <laughs> you know what I mean? it's too late, right? Yeah. And then... But while you're in there too, man, you have to find a way to deal with it, right? So, oh. so that's what we did. We had fun. I had fun. I had fun. I, I find a way to deal with it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, being a strain on my family, fucking up my moms, my kids, all that kind of shit, man, is definitely the biggest regret of my life. Yeah. Like yeah. I could do that time all over again, and you know what I mean. I wouldn't want to, but I wouldn't want to more so because of them, because Absolutely. of how the effect it had on them, man. So I feel that family shit. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it just that that's that's what keeps me going out here, man. Like, is 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 the people that I surround myself with, and you know, my circle's small today. You know, yeah. I always thought that for real that you were defined as a man on how many uh, friends on Facebook you had. Mm -hmm. What's that mean? Like, they who are they? No, me shit. Half of them people I don't even think I know. Right. I just hit. Ex oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I like that car. Yeah, and I guess that's kind of came from uh, when all that kind of shit started. It was like, who's the popularist, right? Yeah. Like, who's got the... Like, I had a guy hit me know. up last night, and he was like, hey, man, we have a mutual friend, and I was just trying to I was just trying to see if, if you knew about his character, because I know a woman who's getting ready to rent him a space, and she wanted to know if anybody knew anything about him. Dude, and I went through one on Facebook and pulled dude up. Man, I know dude from nowhere. Just a mutual friend. But he's friend. a friend on Just my Facebook. Friend, right? Yeah, I was like, oh, what? I was like. And it's funny because they automatically draw that line that says you know him. And the funny part about it Just is the dude knew. Like, I took up for him. It's like, yeah, he's a good dude. Right. I don't know. Right. I couldn't tell you if he is. I just hey, sucked out. Yeah, don't do that, though, man. Now that dude goes over somebody. Well, now I was looking at <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was scrolling through his pictures, you know what I mean? And he had a crap ton of pictures with his kid. Like oh, okay. he looks like, dudes, looks like a decent looks person. Like dudes all I right, got you. man. So, okay. so yeah, he's all right. You know what I mean? He looks yeah. like he's a but my he's probably a fucking serial killer. Right, been, right, something crazy shit going on there. If your kids come up missing, he has them. Ain't it right? And it was it wasn't staying that the answer that me. request. Go, you're going to deleting that guy off your <laughs> Yeah, show. I don't know that guy. What, that, that's, uh, yeah, man. So, like, now what are you doing to stay clean? Like, what do you do on a daily basis that keeps you away from all that shit? Man, I, you know, I run, do I do meetings? No. Right. I don't like them. Me neither. I, I don't enjoy them. I walk out of there worse than what I did when I walked in. Okay. It's just for me. It's just not me. I, I've, you know, for some people it works and I don't knock it and keep it up if it's working. Absolutely. But for me, I just don't. You know what I mean? And I, you know, I I surround myself with with positive people, people that are going to push me each and every day to be my best, be the best me. You know, it's hard to find them people sometimes, it is. though, ain't it, man? It Damn, is. it's hard to find people that are on your level that that will push you or, or return a phone call. That's it. It is, man. You have yeah. to be supportive, I think. And this is a community that has to support each other, isn't it? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because you have to call each other on their shit, too. Yo, you're fucking up, bro. You're fucking up. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you you're fucking up. Yeah. Like, and that's what we need. Yeah. Like, come over and snatch me up. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, do something. Like, because that's, I feel like that's what we do, man. We, we, we're we crying out for help, but we just don't know how to do it. Right. But there's certain people who's been there that can look in your eyes and realize that where you're at. Right. You, you know can see I mean? the confusion in their face, can't Absolutely. you? Dude, I Abs see it. Absolutely. Looking at my boy the other day, man, he was just sulking and he was so sad and yes. like... Like three days or four days with no Xanax, uh, 
you know, dad took his phone. He can't see his kid. You know, his kid's calling him on his shit and he just, and I'm like, that's what the fuck you need to feel. Absolutely. You like that? You like that, that right there is right what there. changed Absolutely. my life, man. Absolutely. That fucking hurt in my heart, man. Absolutely. You have to feel that somewhere. If you don't feel that and you don't let it change you, man, you know. And I mean, my wife, man, she pushes me each and every day, bro. Like, she makes me the better man that I never even realized. Like, I never really knew that this life existed. And I hung out with people that had lots of money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I never knew that a good life existed. Mm -hmm. It's not about money. It's about Absolutely. You know, and that's what the problem was, is that's what I thought. I thought because they had all that shit. They were doing good in life. No, no, they're smoking the same crack that I am. Mm-hmm. And they're, you know, <laughs> they're snorting the same pill that I am. Yeah, Just man. the difference is, is they figured a way. They figured a way. Yeah, me and, and it didn't work for me. Like, me it, it never, either. it will never. It was pills before bills, and I could never keep up with life. Absolutely. As simple as it that. It just won't, it just doesn't happen. And, you know, it's just. Yeah, I don't know, man. I'm I'm grateful for the things that I have. Um, I mean, shit, I'm in the process of buying my first house. Bro, you know what I'm saying? Trying to take that same step, man. That like, feels good. Oh, I mean, the paperwork is freaking enough that make you want to snort a pill. Drive you crazy. <laughs> no, for okay. real, it does. It's a lot. But, you know, I uh, because I'm late in the game and, you know, my wife had been there before. So I let her. She's got she got hold of the reins. You know what I mean? Like, she's got control of all this, and she's going to make sure that the deal happens in the manner that we're looking for. Um, you know, I I coach youth football. Like, I, I, I'm i something different in the community than right, what right. I was. You're giving things back. I'm trying to give back. I feel like that's something that comes with it, ain't it? What else you doing? You know, I work. Right. Like, I'm, I'm building a name for myself in this industry, you know, I think another thing that makes me think about all that too, is the legacy. You start thinking about like, for example, you know, my boy just died, you know, he just died. And what he left behind with his kids and his family is just despair and hurt and pain. Yeah. He didn't get the opportunity to to every, he never had a chance to make up for it, bro. We sitting here, we got the chance to make up for that shit. We can't take back the years we fucked up. But I'm here for my kids now. Yeah. It's not how you start. It's how you finish. Yeah, exactly. That's what they say. And, and I, I'm so concentrated on that, man. An old timer like told me too. that when I was in prison, he said that same statement and it went through the one ear and out the other, but it actually somewhere in the mix of there, it broke off and stuck to me just a little bit to rem- that. I remembered that, you know what I mean? Like, right. so that's they how say that youth is wasted on the young man, because we have so many opportunities to do things and we. Don't realize it until we're older. Sad. It's sad that, you know, I, of course, we always make that statement. Man, I wish I could go back and do it all over right, again. So, again, let's do that. The time the time machine question. If you could go back to one point, was there one person that changed everything? Was there one day that changed everything that you think you could change and switch it all up? And if you could, would you? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It It would be right when I moved out of my house for the first time. You know what I mean? Like. I had folks that were like, hey, come stay with me. You know what I mean? Let's get you on the right track. But that wasn't it. That wasn't what, like, I was already mixed up with this other crowd that, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? That made me, that made me feel good. They made me feel good. say that. The dopamine hits was coming, bro. Yeah, they made me feel good. That's what life's all about. Yeah. It's that feel good, and that's what we search for. It might be a girl. It might be a puppy. (laughs) <laughs> it might be a drug, but that's what we go for in life. That's the name of the channel, man, because we're fucking savage that way. We're yeah. monkeys that way. We just want to feel good. Yeah. And that's what you went towards was what made you feel better instead of the work. Yeah. Because the other side was work. We had to work. And, yeah. and, and don't get it wrong. They were right there the whole time, like constantly. Hey, man, it's not too late for you. Right. You know what I mean? You ain't locked up yet. Come on, man. Seen it again right happen, didn't they? And then I go to jail and then they show up for visit. They was predicting the fucking future. But all them other motherfuckers didn't, did they? No, hell no. All hell, them, hell no. They ain't send you a dollar. Not even a thank shit. They ain't show up. Nope. They won't respond to your phone Try to calls. fuck your old lady is what they try That's to do. That's all they do. Dirty motherfuckers, man. That's all they are, bro. <laughs> Dirty motherfuckers. 
Yeah, they're ter- straight up. They're terrible, bro. They're t- them homeboys. Your boys were terrible. Yeah, you know what I mean, they right. were fucking the worst. Yeah, air quotes around boys. <laughs> yeah. Fucking shit bags, man. I do still have a couple dudes that I've made it through all that shit with, though, man. Me too. That are loyal motherfuckers, yeah. and I got mad respect for them. Yeah, me too. I mean, they're the one of them. You know what I mean? He's kind of. I think he's slipping a little bit. But I'm I'm going to help him, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like because if I can figure it out, you know what I mean. He's not going to tell me until he's ready, and I know that. And I'm not going to pry it out of him because I'm not that guy. What I've been doing with that is I just been letting him know I'm here, just same way the other people. Yeah, that's what man. I tell. I, yeah. I call him all the time. And yeah, middle Dude, of the how day. How are you? What are you doing? Yes, I'll be sitting at long, at work, and Thinking I'll hit about him up. You, hey bro. man, how you, you doing? All right. Thank you. Blah blah. And you know, and for that twenty minutes, you know what he's. You feel like it's hard for guys to do that, right? Oh, you yeah. feel like it's a hard thing yeah. for a man to reach out to another man. There you yeah. are beating your chest again. Well, monkeys, guys. bro. Yeah, well, we're guys. fucking monkeys, ain't we? Ain't, Beat up the other man and take the woman. That's why we're built. Yeah. I'd be damned if a dude, if I felt belittled under another man. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've been there. I've been there in jobs and things like that. Yeah. Motherfuckers talk to you a certain yeah. way and you're just like, what? Yeah. And, you know, sometimes you got to take it. Sometimes you don't. Yeah, walking around the job site with a two by four, thinking how I could drop this bitch on his head. Right. Yeah. Over ego. That's it. Yeah. Ego you gonna lose your pride. job, lose all the money, and he's still gonna get up tomorrow and go back to work with a band aid on his head. Like, come on, bro. Like, think about what we're doing. And it's the same thing with life. Like, if I go out here and I use, I know two places for sure I'm going to end up, and that is either. 141 Fort Collier Road or Mount Hebron Cemetery. Yeah. Either one. One or the other. So I'm not, I, I refuse. I refuse. That's the line that you draw, though, isn't it? Yeah. You learn to draw a fucking line, bro. Do you smoke? Do you drink? Do you do anything at all? That's it. Yep. That's Every good. once in a while, I smoke a little weed, man. You right know on. why? Because I feel like. Over the years, there was one thing that I've suffered from that I never knew what it was because I never took time to look into it. But anxiety, bro, it lit, lights me up to the point to where I don't do shit now. Mm-hmm. Like, I just don't. I don't like being in crowded places. I don't like ha- having my back to a exit. That's prison shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, every time don't get go, behind me. Right. Every time you go into a restaurant, you're sitting in a certain yeah. spot. Yeah. Like, I catch myself reaching over the table, like, reaching around people's plates. You know what I mean? Because. So, tell me a couple of habits that you think you got from prison that are good habits. <laughs> Waking up early. That's a good one. Working out. That's another one. Uh, Routine. Like, I, I live life in a routine now. Like, you know. Right. And so. Really, the main thing about how I it is the feeling that I got being in prison and have to call home. Like, that's what made me who I am today. That's why I've refused to go back. I don't want to make them phone calls no more. I'm supposed to take care of my people. They're not supposed to take care of me. Yeah. My family, my mom and dad are getting old. Mm-hmm. They need me. I don't need them no more. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. They need me. And I gotta be out here, and and and, you know I. Another, I remember one of my buddies in there, man. We were really close, and I remember the morning that they called his name. And he he went out. They was like, "Hey, the the counselor needs to talk to you." And I watched him walk into the council office, and then him, they walked out. You know, and he had to find out that his kid had just perished in a house fire. You know what I mean? A two-year-old little girl had just perished in a house fire. That's the shit that'll break you, bro. Like, I watched so many people lose their peoples while they were in jail, and it's like, you know. And so, fast forward to losing, you know, I, how I knew, I, I thought, I think I had, Finally got the grips of this thing. So, you know, I don't know if you remember. In 2001, I lost my grandson to SIDS. I do. And uh, you want to talk about, you know, 
It's if there was any time for me to use, okay, that should have been it. It's a heartache you can't even oh, imagine. Good lord! And like this, the the morning that like we had just seen him, you know, what I mean, we were just there, and we it was Fourth of July, and then went home, went to bed, and it was like six thirty in the morning. My phone was going off, and uh. My son was really big for like last minute planning. Like he would literally call you as he's driving to your house to ask you to watch his kid. Okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which we would always do. Right. So my phone went off and I didn't answer it. I I couldn't wake up. I was, you know, we didn't get to bed too late and I, we were off and and then my wife's phone goes off. And we didn't answer it. Then my phone goes off again and I was like, "Hold up, something's wrong." And I answered it. And when I listened, when you, when I heard my son scream, dad, it, it's like, it's one of those, like, I hear it. I can still hear it. You know what I mean? Like, and I knew he said, and the way he said dad, and then he was like, Kazakh's dead. And I'm like, what? I was like, come on, man. You know, it's an, I'm, like, I'm literally still in my boxers sitting up in bed. And then yeah, he said it a dream again. type shit. Yeah, so I he said it again, and literally I jumped out of bed in my boxers, and I, t- I yell at my wife. I'm like, "Come on, we gotta go," and she doesn't know what's going on. And she's and I'm like, "Something's wrong with the baby," and we jump in the car, and I, we literally fly. I mean, to the point we're running through red lights. We don't care, you know what I mean? Like I'm, I gotta get to my son. And it still hadn't hit me. It, it hadn't hit me that something was wrong until we turned on the road and it was, you know, yellow tape and and oh, fuck. fire department, and cops everywhere. And it looked like a homicide scene, bro. And I'm like, so I jump out of the car and I run into the house and my son, they got my son in the kitchen. And I'm like, you know, have you said it? Like, wait a minute. Right. Stop talking. You know what I mean? Because I, I still don't know the I don't know what's going on. I don't know if somebody did and, something. And to everything this baby. about us tells the us not part talk was to not the police even, either. Yeah, yeah, don't talk to them. Right. Just wait a minute. You know, I'm trying to figure out who I can call lawyer wise. I can call to make sure that everything something. When all reality, we had nothing to do criminal. It's just they treated the us such. That, yeah, the fact that you were scared for more people being fucked up than what is already the terrible situation you were yep. in. So they, you know, they. Yeah. And then the cops, you know, I'm like, I'm asking, where's my grandson? Where's my grandson? And this one cop, he's standing at the door and he's like, he's in here, but you can't go in there. And I'm like, bro, you got my grandson in there alone? Like, it doesn't, it's not fathoming me that my grandson's passed away. Right. And I was like, you got him in there alone? And he was like, yeah, you're not coming in. And I said, listen here, motherfucker, if I wanted through the door, I'm getting through it. So come on, man. Like, stop all that. Like that's my that's my grandchild in there you're talking you about. You heartless prick. You heartless piece of shit. Like but you know they finally got us all in in yeah. Whew. That was by f- oh that was that was rough, man. So you thought about using in those moments or not even a little bit, bro. Right. The one thing that kept telling myself that I kept saying that, you know, there's no way because if some if they needed me at any time in their life, this was it. So, yeah, they, you know, and at that time I was still going through the whole drug court program, you know what I mean? Okay. And the whole time they're calling me saying, are you okay? And I'm like, finally I had to cuss them out. I'm like, listen here, stop calling me, asking me if I'm all right, because I know why you're asking me. No, I'm not going to get high. Mm-hmm. Ask me how my son's doing. Right. That's what you need to be doing. You know what I mean? Ask me how my wife's hanging in there because everybody has lost their mind right now. Like, we don't know what to do. We don't know the next. We don't know. We've never had to go through this. Never buried anybody younger than me for the most part. Usually they were the same age. Not in a casket that small, bro. No. And that's 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 a. I went through the same thing with a buddy of mine, Marty, when I was about 24. No. Yep. 22 or 24. Saddest funeral of my life. Cried my eyes out, bro. Oh. 
So sad. It was horrible to see that little coffin come out. It's just horrible. Yeah. Oh, it's 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 the most ridiculous thing, man. Like, and the whole you know, it's just every the whole oh, you know, God has a plan. And I told I said, there's no way. You know, how does that make sense? Right? How's that? Why would he bring something like that into the world just to snatch it? From, no, come on, think about your beliefs, bro. That doesn't even make sense to me. What's the lesson being learned there? Yeah, I just would tell him, man, and get out of my face with all that. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I don't even. Yeah, you're not helping. No, you're not. This you're is, not helping no. at that point. I like, know. I know your intentions are good, but there's not nothing helping. that you can tell me that this was it's supposed time, to man. happen. It's time. It still hurts you today, but it's not like the first day. Oh, yeah. But, God, oh, it, it's still there, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, we have— And then when you think about where would they be today, who would they be today? Yeah. That's the thought that kills me with my baby's mama. Who would she be today? Who would my kids be today? Yeah. Because she died while I was in prison, too. Yeah. So I know that feeling when that motherfucking captain comes to you and says somebody that you cared about has died, and mm -hmm. you still got four years to go. Yeah. I've been there. Like, what do you want to do? nightmares is what you do you have nightmares every night yeah i've been there it sucks yeah but so now yeah, we man, have that, that's the thoughts that are tough ain't it is because yeah and now you know we have since then we've had you know we welcomed the birth of two grandchildren mm -hmm. um how old are they now so we got uh, 11 months and then eight months babies you know what i mean right. still babies man right and, you know, you catch yourself for the first couple of months of their life, like being on edge, make it like you're trying to Sid proof everything, mm -hmm. which doesn't there's not even not even you a can't thing. Sid proof nothing. It's there's not no, even a thing. <laughs> yeah, man. You're like, oh, is that is that Sid approved? Mm -hmm. And they're like, mm -hmm. sure. But I guess it's the same thing as like, you know, if, uh, you know, you walk over there barefoot and it's going to hurt your feet, you learn not to do it. So Absolutely. you're telling everybody else not to do it, too. And you're like, we don't want that shit to happen again because it rocks your fucking world, man. Rocks it. Like, I, I, I wouldn't wish that pain on the worst, you know, to the worst enemy out there, man. But, you know, we've we've learned to get over, you know, we we, we celebrate him every year. You know, he'll never be forgotten. Um and yeah, I I want to. I wish I knew what he was, man. Like I want to know what he looks like. Right. Like, like, but he sends he sends signs all the time, and I don't know if you believe in that stuff, man. But we have dimes that show up every day around my house. My wife cleaned out a room the other day. Literally, like we're having getting it painted today. And she, last night we were up there just checking stuff, making sure it's ready to go, and. uh there were two dimes laying on the floor, and she's like, "Did you put them dimes there?" And I'm like, "No." She's so, like, what's the dimes mean for people? It's that some don't symbol. Understand. It's supposed to be a symbol from uh, a loved one. You know, they. I don't know exactly. I'm not going to say anything. My name. my, gr my uh, girl says the same thing about her grandmother. That her grandmother told her, "Every time you see a dime, it'll be me saying something." So yeah. I understood as soon as you started talking about it. Yeah. So. Yeah, they, they pop up all the time, and I know it's him, you know what I mean? And it warms my heart to know that he's, you know what I mean, like he's there. Yeah, uh, you know, there's a couple of different ways you can think about that, but whatever brings you the most joy, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's what you got to do. Same thing if people want to go to meetings, let them go to meetings. Exactly. Like, go, you know, I'll take you. Uh, yeah, If right. you really need a meeting, right. call me and I'll take you. So with that too, man, uh, you know, where can people find you? What do you do? You're a barber. I'm a barber. Right, you're still at, doing that? Yep. Yeah. Egan and Company's over here at Weems Lane. Okay. That's where I'll be. You know what I mean? Um, I enjoy what I do. And and a little backstory on Egan and Company. Uh, so I met, I met him at probably the lowest point of my life. You know what I mean? Like I was full-blown junkie. I was terrible and uh needed a job man and they actually reached out to me because i had just left the shop and they reached out to me and asking me hey you know we're just opening how would you like to come and be a part of our team and of course a part of me saying but the only thing i could think about was money man i needed to make money it's right. just, i know i can make money doing this job sure come along boom 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 i end up stealing from them you know what I mean? I went to prison for that. You know what I mean? Okay. I went to jail. <laughs> prison. And uh now this this is a couple this is years ago. And, you know, 
I came home and the one thing I always told people that I'm going to make amends with one person. I would never expect him to ever trust me or, or, or anything again, but I need that closure because I want him to know that it had nothing to do with him. It was not personal. I, it was not. Right. So I did hit him up when I got home. But I, you know, I'm so sorry for what I did. And he hit me back, man. A long message talking about how he's, he was so happy that I did that. You know, he thinks about me all the time. He's sorry for what he did. And I'm like, yo, don't ever be sorry for saving my life. Right. You know what I mean? And uh, we had been talking, you know, just as friends. And one day he hits me up and says, hey, I want to sit down with you. He'd seen I was, you know, I was doing well in life. It was, it was like I was stuck at a dead end shop that was no good for me. And he seen that. And he was like, man, I and he wanted to get me out of there. Literally took me back. Bro. Hmm. I have a key to his business. So I, I put I, money I, in the cash register. I every wondered day. about that because I knew about that to a little bit. And then when I found out you was working back there again, I was like, OK. Yeah. I had no idea. But now it's the gifts that you're given when you do the right thing, man. Like right. I never in my wildest dreams had would have thought that I would be back working there. No doubt. And now not only do I work there, I am. You know, hit one of his go-to guys. Out. Ain't it? You feel like somebody like that would hate you. I thought so. Right? Like, and I understand. And I, and you, and I understood it. You. I was okay right, with I'm it. I'm good with it. I'm cool. I fucking did you wrong. Yeah, you. And the fact that you can come and 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 forgive me to my face and trust me again says a lot about that person's character and and their care for you. Because sometimes it's somebody that loves you, mom, dad, brother, sister, cousin, what the fuck ever. They can forgive you pretty easy. They know they love you. Yeah. But this guy right here wasn't family. Didn't know me from nowhere other right. than the point that he had seen some of my work on Facebook and he wanted me to work for him. And I was, I should have never, at that point in my life, should have never made that call. You know what I mean? Should have never ex mm -hmm. responded. Because I knew that I was n not ready to... to <laughs> Yeah, but again, but I was, to, but I wasn't. Back you to where you are now. Yeah, it's got you where you are now. They're right. Here. I'm like, here. here we and, are, and, bro. And like I said, you know, I, I have a key. You know, I put, I take money from one spot to other spots and put it here. You know, so I, I'm, he trusts me, man. Right, I'm, that's I'm, good. A tr I'm that's trusted, what's up. and that feels good because, hell, I didn't trust myself for so many years. Shit. Right. You know what I mean. Right. Like I hated going to somebody. You know. I think honesty is a big part that comes along with that, right? Yeah. You live honestly. You don't lie. You don't Absolutely. do deceitful. If you're doing cruddy shit, then you're not living the right life, right? That's cruddy it. stuff, it doesn't matter how it works. It don't have to be certain things to be that cruddy. Right. There's a lot to life that's cruddy. Talking yeah. about people behind their back. Yeah. You're cruddy. Yeah. You know what I mean? For sure. But yeah, so that's that's what I'm up to, Jamie, man. I ain't nothing... I'm glad to be alive. Right. I'm glad to be 44. I earn these grays. Yeah. I remember when you was running around looking like Eminem. You know what I'm saying? I do. I remember when we was Sesame working together. Road. Yeah. I remember when we was working together. Yeah. You lived uh, in that little white spot there down the road from me in Stephen City. Yeah, right there on Main Street, right across from the post office. Ecstasy. Yeah. Good ecstasy. We just get fucked up. But that's not what we're talking about. Life was different. It was different, man. It was different. So I remember uh, I, I remember I used to work with you. Uh -huh, remember, uh -huh. and you had me on them bullshit ass pump jacks that one day, and I, I was did. pissed, man, because I, I was dropping. We were going, and we dropped like twelve feet, man. Went, <laughs> and I thought I was going to die, and I told you I was like absolutely <laughs> under no circumstances am I to climb these things again. Ever again, I'll be your cut man. I'll stay on the ground. No, no. You don't want to be up there. Yeah, I'm scared of heights, anyways. But see. I needed a job, so I wouldn't tell somebody that. Right. I just somehow suck it up and figure it out, not realizing uh, that some days I'd be up there froze, and you'd be like, hand me something. And I wanted to tell you that I couldn't because I can't move right now. But we figured it out. Yeah, man, we definitely did. Yeah, those are uh, rough times for me, too, man. That that place right there was a bitch. I'd just come home from jail a year bid when I stayed there, and it did not take me long to start fucking up doesn't it did not two three months i was i mean hell within a couple of weeks i was sneaking weed knowing i wasn't supposed to do it yeah yeah i always did that on probation you know thinking to myself the worst thing they could have done for me in probation was giving me those three months in between meetings because you know you start telling yourself oh shit cool 
Right. I can get high for a month. Yeah. And then I'll chill for then two. Then I got to turn it off. And then I can get high for two months. I got a whole month to clean up. And then next thing you know, you're calling probation, telling them you can't make it because your dog died and then your carburetor's out in your Mustang. <laughs> like you're describing the everything. Muscle bearing fell out. Yeah. Too. And it's like. Whatever. Yeah. Because I could never stop either. Oh, not like, like they had not. You know, they hadn't went through this before. They haven't heard the same stories from other people. Like, they were going to believe me. Like, we don't know that, right? And then they tell me that, well, if you're not here by so-and-so o'clock, well, of course, I'm not going. Yeah. Because I know I'm not going. Why would I go? You might as well. Let me put my rabbit shoes on and let's get this thing started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The delusion is that we could control it. Yeah. That was the delusion. Is that we, you know, we knew it would get us this, but we thought, nah, I'll just do it a little bit. And it might start that way, right? It oh, might absolutely. start that way. It might start where you're like, oh, I just did one. And then I waited three weeks and I did another and it's been three weeks. And now you feel like, oh, it's cool. I'm good. I've been, but it ain't going to keep working that way. Not if you've had a problem before. Like the cocaine, man, when I, f- I started off selling it, I jumped right into the, to that game. Never, had never touched it. Didn't even care. Took this baggie and handed it to this person. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Felony. One, one, you know. And I would, uh, it got to the point, dude, I wanted to see what all the hype was about. Why would folks send, spend their whole paycheck with me? Why would they bring me titles to cars? For what? For this little white substance. <laughs> there it is. There it was. Then I'm owing my man money. You know what I mean? Like, and then it just started this, this whole process of, of just the world went down and jails, institutions, and deaths, man. Yeah. That's where, that where it all. It's where it all ends, it, unless you're where we are right now. Absolutely. And the only way we're going to because see Because you're somewhere in that whirlwind, man, you get caught. They catch yeah. you. Boom. They save you. They, they, and, and my, my family and my wife, man, that, that's my saving grace, bro. That's. I couldn't ask for a better person, you know, a better partner, you know. Shit. That's let, what's it, up. let it eat. So where can we people find you, man? Like what what socials do you use? Just Facebook or Facebook. Um I, I'm on Instagram, but I use that directly for just business purposes. Right. Videos. So that's what I was kind of getting at. If people want to reach out for a yeah. haircut or something like that, where yeah. do they contact you? Uh, so we have a website, Egan and Company, the barbershop. You get on there. Man, it's great. It's one of the easiest systems to use. Yeah, it can. It'll lead you to appointments. Mm-hmm. You schedule with me and and, and come. And they, can, they can say Stan. It's got your name. Yep, it'll have my name. It has a bio. Right, you can look it up. Um, and if if you have trouble with the system, because of course some people they have trouble with that type of stuff. Call me. Call right. me at the barbershop, man. And okay. I will straight phone number on there too. There's a straight phone number on there. I'll, I'll put you in. I'll find a spot for you. That's you know, I'm and all you do all that styly shit where you you carving stars oh, yeah, in people's heads and yeah, all that yeah, shit too, right? That. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's that's my way. Of, it's my it's my art, man. Like some that's people draw, some you tattoo. Mm-hmm. I get it. I cut hair too. I used to cut hair in prison. Yeah, so, so yeah, you it's know? definitely a creative thing. Yeah, I'm nice. That's what's up. I'm nice with it. I just I don't know where I got it. I don't know how it happened, but hey. I'm gonna I I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna take and run with for it for sure. Right before we close out, though, how bad is it to have to cut in prison to cut in jail? Come how on, bro, much for how, a soup, bro? How much do them people bug you? Oh, huh? To I'd be like, the only white barber on the yard? Yeah, and I'd be like, bro, you just got a cut this morning. They're like, hold on, I got a visit. I, I don't care, bro. Like, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I'll give you two soups. I'll give you two soups, and I'm thinking, you know what I mean? Now I'm making over a hundred thousand a year. Right. <laughs> Went from two soups to that. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a good. Thank shit, you, ain't Journey. It? <clears throat> Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely uh, about the journey, not the destination, man, because yeah. we haven't reached that destination yet. No. I don't feel like we're there yet. No, no. That, there's the, the, but the blessings are happening along the way. Right. And that, that's what I'm enjoying, man. Like, I'm not, I don't really, I don't look at tomorrow, especially this early in the morning. You know what I mean? I'm just starting my day. Let me get through it and figure some things out for today. And then tomorrow right. I'll start, I'll plan a little bit. That's a good philosophy, not getting overwhelmed, especially when you talk about having anxiety. Yeah. Because it's, it, you it know. get overwhelmed. But I don't want to take no pills, man. I don't, mm-hmm. I refuse. You know what I mean? Like, like for everybody, they got their own thing. 
You know what I mean? Like for me, my true beliefs is like a dope. A, somebody that does the dope should not be on suboxins or methadones. Mm-hmm. That's my own personal opinion. If it's working for you, continue to do it. I because you know because they tried to push that off on me at one time, and I was like. Yeah, well, let me ulti- do some research. Yeah, and- the ultimate goal being to be on nothing, though, right? Is basically exactly. what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. You don't so wanna- if you you can step from Subox and whatever, step yourself down. But I think the ultimate goal should be zero to. Yes. Yeah. I, I because that- fi- you'll get feelings of of certain things that you do that are way better than than a hit of crack. Yeah. Well. Or, you know, bringing it back to Suboxone and Methadone, those things dull you so much that I think some of the emotions and feelings that I feel without it versus on it are way stronger and better for me. You know what I mean? And that's just me, man, because I've done all of it. I've done Suboxone. I've done Methadone. I did five years of Methadone. That shit comes out of your fucking bone marrow, yeah. dude. It's, it was I knew a girl that literally tried to jump out of the car going down 81 because she said her skin was crawling so bad. And- yeah, that's definitely, I think, should be the ultimate goal, man, which is what this is all about, man, to show people that, bro, like, we were in it, right? Yeah. Like, we were in the fucking trenches, right? Yeah. And and here we are. We're showing people that this can be done. It's not easy. It's, it takes a lot of work. You know, you got to rebuild trust with people. Yeah. And, and you got to, you know what I mean, plan on being sober. You have to plan on it. You can't not make plans to stay straight. Yeah. And if I could just leave one seed for somebody out there, man, just... Just remember that it's not as bad as it seems. Reach out for help. There's people out here that will help you. I might not know you from nowhere. I work at Egan and Company, the barbershop. If you need somebody to talk to, come talk to me. If I can if I can talk you off of that ledge for one day, man, then I've done it I've done my due diligence for today. I love it when y'all do that. Yeah, man. So, uh, is that it? You want anything to say anything else? I got a fucking tattoo appointment. It's going to be showing up any minute. Nope. I'm good to go, That's bro. good, man. I'm glad you came, bro. Absolutely. This was a good conversation. I think we got a lot of shit out, man. So, drop a like for Stan, man. He said, reach out to him. The man does mad haircuts. If I didn't just shave my head, I would be going to him myself. That's a fact, because I used to when I had my hair cut. Um, but now I just shave my head, so I don't. But yeah, hit him up, man. I do beards, too. Don't get it twisted. That's right. That, mm, I don't know if I'm going to let anybody touch that motherfucker. <laughs> All right, but thanks for watching, y'all, man. Hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed, man.